Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial where I design a synth patch from scratch and try to explain to you the design process as I'm doing it. Today I'd like to try to design a patch with Zebra 2 from Yuhei, yu he um, I don't know how you're supposed to say it in English, it's a German company. And I absolutely love this synth. It is my favorite synth and especially for cinematic context. Like th there's a reason Hans Zimmer mainly used this one for his Dark Knight soundtrack. And what I want to try to do today is again another cinematic uh, ambient pad underscore whatever you might call it. Because that's just the kind of mood I'm in currently. As with the last time, uh, I'm going to try out a few things, try to find a direction I want to go, and then I'll get back to the video, tell you what I've done so far, and then we'll design the rest together. Okay, so I think I actually found an idea pretty quickly this time. I'd like to try to keep it very simple. I'm just working with two sine waves for now, and which sounds like this. They're both being volume modulated with our main envelope, envelope one here, it has a slow attack. So this itself is not very interesting, but watch what happens when we try, when we start changing the tune of one of the oscillators a little bit. So for this, I'll choose, uh, I'll choose LFO2 because LFO1 is currently, I think it's hot mapped to vibrato. And uh, I just like very, very small changes. So let's say maybe 50 cents, so half a semitone. And it's not supposed to do more than that. And now we have this beating effect, which is the result of phase cancellation happening between the two waves. So, but for my taste, this is a bit fast. Okay, maybe something more like this. I'll add some reverb with this new rev, just so we have a bit more sustain. Fine. Okay, and beneath that, I would like another tone. They can just kind of sit there. I'll add a filter. Kind of keep the high frequencies in check. By the way, the filters in Zebra are excellent. I love these filters. The way they drive and distort sometimes is just amazing. And it has so many, there's so many to choose from. So I'll just go through um, playing with the wavetable position of this one and, and the filter type and resolution and drive and cut off until I find a, just just the sound that sounds good. That's actually pretty cool too. I like the spookiness that happens once we raise the resonance at this point. Uh, another cool thing about Zebra is we have four mixing lanes and we have three mixing lanes in the master section just by itself. So that we have so much control over amount and volume uh, between different parts of a sound because 
Sound design often is just layering. It can be difficult to get a good sound just using one synth. Um, you would usually want to add more to that synth, be it more bottom end or more high end. And with this, it's so easy because I just I have more lanes to use. So, so since I don't want this to be on the entire time and to have more control over it, I'm putting it on a second lane. Also, I want to take away some bottom end, so but I don't want to sacrifice a filter. So I'll go to the oscillator FX and just choose a filter, which is just a normal high pass, low pass. Which does have some resonance and drive to it. Interestingly, I never really noticed that. Modulating the wave table position slowly sounds kind of cool too. Adds the little bit of spice. I don't know, a little bit of uncontrolled something. <laughs> I don't know what word to choose for this. So I'll take another LFO. You know, maybe I'll take a multi-stage envelope generator. Enough, another really nice concept of Zebra, which Massive doesn't have. So just modulating small amounts. Uh, I want a single trigger. This is kind of like the restart of, of an LFO. Should it continue the whole way through or should it start from the beginning once you press a new note? Can add points. If I remember how to do that. Ah, it's, it's option, okay. Oops. Let's maybe make an eight bar loop. So maybe we'll have it do nothing in the beginning. Then it comes in for a little bit, goes down again. And then rises more rapidly for a little bit. And then falls again. Let's see what that sounds like. Need to set the loop length to all eight bars. Add another point. That's yeah, good enough for now. Bring back my filter. Cool. Okay. The all round filter is usually quite harsh. So I'll add another one just to keep that one in check. Uh, this key F, uh, it stands for key follow, which um, key follow means if it's at zero and I press one note, it has a value. If I press another note, it has the exact same value. With key follow, the values will change with the note that you're playing, which can be important when you design patches like this that are very dependent on hitting specific parts of the frequency spectrum with 
its filters and its resonances uh, because those are fixed values. But I'm just playing one note. If I play different notes, it might sound different. Well, it will sound different. So I'll just add some key follow preemptively. It's not going to be perfect. It's hard to get this perfect, but it's a start. And I'm not going for any tuned notes right here. I'm just going for something that sounds creepy. And that can pretty much be any note. I don't want key follow on this one. This is just a... This one is more, oh, I would say this one is more an effect filter and this one is more an utility filter uh, because this one isn't supposed to make any interesting sounds by itself. It is just supposed to control everything that comes before it. So in my mind, that's a utility filter. And I don't want that to move in, in pitch. That should always what with the with the the keyboard that should always do the same amount of filtering regardless of what note I'm playing. I guess it'll change later on, but at least that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so now there's quite a bunch of things I want to move with another LFO. So I want resonance to move up and down. I want this cutoff cutoff to also move a little bit in the same time, but not the same amount. And in the end, I will want to modulate the overall wall, <clears throat> the overall volume of this second lane, because it's supposed to be a fade in, fade out sound, and the filter itself isn't doing that enough. So I'm helping this whole movement by also modulating volume. Oh, this might, this might actually be, I think this is a bipolar modulation, meaning it will take this point and apply positive and negative modulation to it. I actually just wanted to go up. Okay. So instead, can I do it like this? Modulation matrix also very, very nice. Super useful. Yeah, that's more of what I'm going for. Right. Um, but again, I want some more control over the movements. So I'll take another multi-stage envelope generator, msec. Add some more points.
Okay, I found a movement I kind of like. Um, this is just playing around with it, getting to know how it works, and finding movements the way that it, they sound natural and good to your ear, uh, and adjusting the values of how much do you want to apply to each. Um, it's just always trial and error. Let's maybe also add a tiny amount of movement to the cutoff point of the all-round filter. And you can change tiny values by holding shift. So 15 cents, why not? Anytime you have a filter and it has very high resonance changing, the cutoff point itself can add some pretty drastic results. Okay, so last step is the volume. Uh, I'll just do it from here. Maybe just because it's fun, let's also try to modulate our panning. Because why not? Yeah, that's much cooler. Okay, let's bring back our original sound. though. Also good. Adding voices and detuning them can add to more wobbliness. It's always a nice term, wobbliness and synth design. Okay, any way to make this more interesting? You can always try one of these many, many effects, which I don't know what the hell they do. <laughs> I always look it up and I always forget. It's all kinds of wave folding and wave shaping and what have you. You don't have to know these things as long as you know how they sound. There, done. <laughs> I don't know what that does. It sounds cool, so I'll go with it. In fact, what happens if I do this? Oh. Okay, that's one way. 
What if they're not in sync though? What if they work with different timings? this shape. Maybe this needs even... needs another filter. Because I'm not quite loving the sound yet. This all sounds very digital. That's better. Resonance doesn't sound great, though. This is kind of like a lo-fi filter. Which, another cool thing, I like this sound, but I don't want to... Oops, sorry. But I don't want to master apply it to this chain, so this will get its own dedicated lane, and I'm taking my input from lane 2. I mean, that's so cool about this synth. It's almost, it's so modular in a way. I can take signals from almost anywhere and put them almost anywhere. So it is like, the, now this is behaving as if it was on this lane, but it's getting its own unique input. So I could play just this if I wanted to. just to have that sparkle. But let's go back to what I was originally doing. <laughs> what was I doing? All oh, right, <laughs> you get sidetracked easily. I think this one was a good choice. That's nice too. So you know, those two actually might be a good candidate for our first XY pad, which again, uh, 150 times divided by two, it's uh, 75. <laughs> again, another cool thing, the XY pads, because it's just so much control, it's insane. So add them from here, double, 
there we go. Double click adds the modulation range, which you can see here. Now we can play it here, which is, isn't that nice? Doesn't need to go that high, actually. All right. Back to with our main sound. Oh, this one should take its input before this filter. Actually not bad. Let's try I mean we can keep going forever and ever with synths. But let's try to maybe uh move on to the the mastering of this synth. So I have a reverb and I'm thinking I want to comply apply uh some compression shaping Distortion. I'm doing one it after the. Re Let's just try it. There's no point to you wondering. And now emphasizes the our face cancellation. I'm assuming between our main uh, sine wave oscillators and adds this pumping movement, which is great. So how does it sound before the reverb, though? Not as exciting. Good. To know. Huh. So, uh, what else? Let's try some EQing. It's always also always a good idea. Pre or post? Pre or post? Both. <laughs> distortion unit, take my input from the first lane. Just listen to this for a moment. to fire, that's all. Mm, they're both 
both kind of nice. Can someone more experienced with Windows answer me this? I'm used to Mac. I have Windows now, but I'm still getting used to it. I was trying to find the button that I have to push to be able to adjust the slope of this um, of this EQ band, and it turns out it's Windows. Well, with my Mac keyboard, it's Command, which equals Windows, I think. So when I when I hold this down and hold Windows, and I uh, click and drag this band, then I can change its slope. But then this happens. Like, is that normal? I don't know. Is Windows Windows is hard, guys? I'm not used to it. Cool. Still a very harsh sound, though. So let's take our second reverb plugin. To just smear it a little bit. Now going back to our original lane. I actually think this is good enough. I, This could be a point where I stop. What I would do now is just add, uh, find parameters that give you interesting results when moving them and putting them on XY pads. But I don't think I would change anything else about this patch. I mean, this sounds dope. <laughs> You know, for film musicians, it would make sense to put this on the uh, the mod wheel. And just to show, show you how that's done. So in the matrix section, I'll choose my target, which is master return one. Be modulated by our mod wheel. And uh, full on up. So it starts at zero and moving the mod wheel should open this up. Since I don't have a mod wheel, I'll have to do with my BeatStep Pro. Yeah, seems to work. Cool. This low octave sounds dope as well. Pretty nice. I'm hoping you can see why I like Zebra so much. It's just... It's great, I love it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I think that's enough for this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. And if you thought this sounded awesome and you want some more zebra awesomeness for your film scores but you don't feel like spending hours and hours designing these patches yourself you can actually go to my website at uh, observantsound.com where i have a zebra preset pack of 112 presets called uh, xenon shell and the design was very much inspired by um you know it's very cyberpunky very uh industrial very 
cinematic, uh, trailery. So a lot of dark and gritty goodness for your music and your score. So I would love for you to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go there directly. So that's it for this video. Leave a like, leave your comments and questions, subscribe to the channel, yada yada. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.